<clears throat> uh, Brendan, you know, you kind of look at the tape from last week, and it seemed like in run fits there was a lot of overcommitting by numerous members of the defense and just kind of different position groups. What do you guys kind of do to rectify that here in the practice field? Uh, you know, just going through the plays that we missed, um, you know, staying up late in the film room. I mean, that's what Oregon does. You know, they try and they, – they, they make their plays off people being in the wrong gaps. And, uh, you know, we knew that coming into the game. And in, in the beginning, it, it was it was hard for them to run the ball. Then eventually they kind of found themselves. So just staying disciplined throughout the course of a game. You know, you guys only had two pressures as a team, which is just kind of unheard of for uh, for your defensive line. I mean, probably fair to say there may be a couple uncalled penalties, but I won't make you say that. What do you guys kind of – what did they maybe show you that you guys kind of have to work through? Uh, obviously, they have a pretty darn good offensive line, but, you know, you're going to see a lot of good offensive lines the rest of the year. What do you guys kind of have to do to, to work through that and find ways to beat those good offensive lines? Yeah, I would say more so it, it, it credits to Bo Nix. He's getting the ball out really fast, and, um, you know, they have a good scheme around it. They got guys in space, and, you know, it makes it tough when you're a D-lineman. You want to get to the quarterback as fast as you possibly can. There's some circumstances where it just feels like no matter what you do, the ball's gone, you know. So it's going to be just us staying disciplined throughout the game and, you know, when opportunities come, making those things happen and, you know, not getting discouraged. You know, you never want to be – like upset when you're rushing in a game when things aren't going your way you always want to keep going because you never know when that you know play could happen like we saw in Wisconsin second week you know it's you get there and that play changes the course of a game so don't get frustrated and keep keep working throughout the game what Wisconsin play referencing? oh I think we all know what play I'm referencing <laughs> um you know for uh for you obviously you haven't really probably gone up against him uh, one-on-one but you know Jake called uh, Brock do a bulldog after the game on uh, on Saturday and you know we've seen him move into a starting role just where have you seen him maybe grow as a guy who came in and then has really taken the next steps despite you know I think Jake said he probably is 6-1 on a on his, at his best day yesterday maybe not having the the natural offensive line height but is obviously um, a tireless worker and has earned his role I think you said it best it's it's a tireless work ethic that he has I think he reminds me a lot of Connor in a sense where he just he just works super hard at his craft and doesn't care about the measurables. Um, I think Brock's a hell of a player. I think he just does things that, you know, what you would see in a really stout offensive lineman, though he doesn't have the measurables that you would you would typically see in an offensive guard. He just he plays such tenacity and such an edge that he, he like a chip on his shoulder. And so when you go against him in practice, he plays the exact same way in practice as he would in the game. And that's why I think you saw such a, a great performance from him. And I'm really excited for what he's been doing and what he's gonna do going forward. You know, one of the guys you're going to walk out of here with is Lincoln Victor, who's who's over there doing a he, – he's special. He gets to do a second interview. Yeah. But uh, he comes back on Saturday with 16 catches. You know, you obviously missed him when he was out there. What do you – I mean, what does he bring to the team? I mean, what does he maybe kind of meant to you guys as you guys got to go into these last few games together? I think he's a pillar of discipline in our program. I mean, he just does, you know, so much to give his all every single Saturday for this team, for this unit. I mean, I remember back in the winter, he was up at 4 a.m. catching on the jugs machine before we did our winter workouts, and I'm just like, man, like, that is that is some dedication. I mean, so just seeing the kind of success he has now, even coming after an injury, and that's a credit to our training staff for getting him back right, but 16 receptions, and no one's surprised on the team that he was able to have such a monstrous performance because of all the work he puts in on the side. It's it just like he's reaping the rewards that he – that he built up over time. A few guys with some sweatshirts on. I know you have only got the one sleeve on, but uh, uh, yeah. uh, practicing in 35 degree weather for an 85 degree game. What's uh, what's comes with some of those challenges for that? Um, you know, the, the big challenge is where's the sun? Um, you know, it's kind of tough to get that same game like atmosphere when the sun's uh, retreated behind all these clouds here. Um, and I would say, you know, the sweatpants and the and the the t-shirt or the sweatshirts i understand it because you want to feel like you're going to be on game day me personally i like the cold i like to just feel it i know you guys are probably like why you only have one sleeve well i'll tell you why because my tattoos are on this side and i want to show them off <laughs> it's very i know i know it's lame it's lame i know <laughs> we're gonna I'm, I'm gonna see it clipped on twitter i know um but that is the that is, that is the truth and why i do it um it just i, I don't know I, I like it like this but you know, it's, it's going to be tough. I know we talked to the uh, nutrition staff about getting into the sauna over there at the Chinook, so definitely going to be doing that this week just to get acclimated to the weather we're playing in. And, you know, I remember last year we played them at, what, like 1 o'clock? Or two years ago we played them at 1 o'clock down there. It was, that, was, that was hot. So it's, it's going to be a challenge, but I'm, I'm really excited for it. What, uh, what are some of the challenges that the ASU rushing attack brings to you guys? I mean, their running back just seems like a, a bulldozer. I'm um, just watching him on tape. He's he's someone who turns his legs. He goes through contact. He he looks for contact. So uh, another one of those running backs that's going to be going through the motors and, and getting him down early. And I think just having confidence in you know our attack angles, our leverage, and just really taking our shots low to stop this guy because I, we've seen many times on tape where he just kind of runs through the first or second attacker and keeps going. So that's a big thing we've been focused on this week in practice. The tats are strictly for tackling. Is that what you're saying? Tats are tackling. I, gotcha. I like that. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so, so how much of, I guess, the adversity you guys have been facing the last few weeks have 
you know, the, the accountability you, Lincoln, RJ take, and, and, and what kind of is the approach during this time? Are you guys louder in practice than you guys usually are and in, in the locker room? Are you guys leading by example more? What, what's kind of the approach you take during that? I think it just goes to the kind of leadership style everyone has. So for RJ's sake, I mean, I'm sure you, you hear him more in practice. For me, it's a, definitely a lead by example, but it's just kind of going back to, you know, our foundation. Like, what, what are we want to show as a team on tape you know they're not always going to get the outcome that you want football is not always going to be 100 percent perfect but whenever a team puts on our tape when they're scouting us what do they see do they see a team that gives up do they see a team that's lazy like that's not what we try and come out here on this practice field to do and i think every single week we've gone out here that's been our message to the team is just put your all out on, the, on film you know because on game day what you do out here on rogers is going to show up so um, obviously, the last three performances aren't what we want, but let's let's keep the standard the same. Let's keep let's keep trying to elevate it even more so because we still have five more games. We can we still control what we want to do, and like Link said, he, we can decide where we want to go from here. Yeah, off of that, what gives you confidence that you can end with an extra game at the end of the schedule, which is what I'm sure how you want to end your career here. You know? Yeah, I mean just. I have confidence in my teammates because I've seen all the work they've put in over the past like years. You know, all the guys that are here in the summer and all the winter workouts we did. I know what we're capable of, and I think that, you know, this adversity is good for us. It's good just to have that reset of hey, like we still have to work harder than everybody else to get the results that we want. And I think going forward, you're going to see that. You know, obviously the offense had a, had a pretty strong week this last week. Uh, almost 500 yards came through for 434. But the two prior weeks maybe not not their best. Some some tough uh, some tough struggles to go through. What do you guys maybe do as a defense between uh, you know the first team defense and all the way down to the scout team defense to, to try and prepare them for the different uh, looks that defenses are throwing them, whether that's the, the old rush three drop bait, whether it's kind of just man coverage with a spy? What do you guys kind of do to prepare them? I think it's just iron sharpening iron at the end of the day. Um, you know, we can give them all the looks that we want, but at the end of the day, if you they can beat the guy in front of them, it doesn't matter what scheme you throw against them. If you are winning your one-on-ones and you're punching somebody else in the mouth every single play, it, it really, scheme doesn't matter at that sake, you know? So I think for our offense, just how they come to each, come out each day at practice, how our offensive line goes against us and battles we have in the trenches, I think that just really prepares them for any opponent that they go against. Your former D.C. edge coach, handful of assistants, former teammate, all on that other sideline this weekend. What do you do to just kind of ignore the fact that they're there? You can talk to them after the game, but kind of in the game, you know, focus on, on beating them. Like you said, just focus on beating them. You know, it just it just ignore that. Um, you know, there's always going to be some type of storyline for every single game, and I think you know it's a great one for this week. But at the end of the day, it's like we're going against the Arizona State Sun Devils, and uh, it's going to be a great game down there. And it doesn't matter what else is part of that. We have to go out there and do our best. And at the end of the day, it's Cougs versus everybody. Hi, mom. <laughs>